Hey guys, I'm Will from Tested. And I'm Norm from Tested. Norman Chan, you have a giant camera in front of you, but it seems like it's something we've talked about before. Yeah, so this is my Canon 6D. I love this camera. I got it a year and a half ago. It's my primary camera for shooting all the photos you see on Tested. Uh, it's how I learn all this DSLR photography. Mm -hmm. And uh, but it's and it's a can be in the, in the realm of full frame DSLR cameras. It's one of the lighter ones. It's very small and compact, but you have to use it with a big giant lens attached, yeah. and it's not. In any sense of the word, pocketable. No, no, no. This is something I need a dedicated bag for. Uh, when going to conventions like Comic Con, I walk around and hold it in mm -hmm. my hand or have it on a strap, and I have attached to it a really a nice two thousand dollar twenty four to seventy f two eight lens, which is my favorite lens I use of it right now. So all in, that camera's what, like four grand with the lens that you have on it? Uh, when it first was released, yes. Uh, right now, the, this body is about a uh, fifteen hundred dollars. You can get it no problem. The lens is still two thousand okay. dollars. So thirty five hundred and change. Um, but this is, even though it's one of the smaller DSLR cameras, full frame ones, it's still a big system to carry around. So for the past six months or so, I've been looking for a compact camera as a companion camera. Not necessarily something to replace this with, but something to also keep in my bag or maybe keep in a smaller bag to walk around with. And so I've tested things like Sony has a full frame RX1 mm -hmm. camera. That's the one I brought to South by Southwest. Mm -hmm. I use a Fujifilm camera that has an APS-C sensor, kind of like the, the Canon Rebels. Um, but I think I finally found the one, the companion camera, for my DSLR. At least for right now. At least for right now. And this is something I actually have purchased. It is, and I'm dun, behind dun, it, dun, dun. the Whoa. Sony RX100 Mark III. It's a, it sounds like Iron Man armor. I know. With all these marks or so. Well, is and, this gonna fight with the old ones at the end of, the, at the, end of this video? Uh, I, I hope not. Um, <laughs> it would handily win. Uh, this is the latest of Sony's compact RX camera line. Okay. Uh, now it's the Mark III because there was a Mark II and a Mark I. I actually have tested both of those. Neither of the ones beforehand um, met my needs for a compact camera. If I recall, you were testing the Mark II when they announced the Mark yes, III, right? Yes, that was just earlier this year. Yeah. And the Mark II at that point had been several months old. Um, so I'm gonna run down through just like the, the kind of the high level what this camera class is and who this camera really is for for the people because uh, what were you looking for like, that's I was, my yeah. question. so yeah. I was looking for a camera that had really good image quality and image quality was, was paramount image quality and and um, which ties into both the sensor in the camera mm -hmm. that small sensor inside and also the lens and also the size the size and weight so for usability something you can put you wanted something you could put in a jacket pocket a jacket pocket or even you know a laptop bag or something okay uh, but not necessarily my backpack and it, always it, on camera not something you have to carry your big camera yes, bag around for is I think the, the cell phone camera the smartphone camera while serviceable for some things is not really suitable for professional work. And did you want to, I mean, I know one of the things you've talked about a lot of times with regard to image quality is will it produce pictures that you can then print and blow up so that they're huge, you can hang them on your wall or whatever. Yeah, and that's one of the use cases. I, I don't really print my own pictures. What mm -hmm. I do is it's got to be good enough that I can I present it for you guys on the site, on Tested, um, that I want to save as if I was the only, if this was the only chance I was going to interact with a subject, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's you know like a, a prop or something at a shop or on a trip or something, um, would I be happy knowing that that was the only copy of the photo I had was with this camera? So uh, about two years ago, Sony released the RX100, just the the Mark One. I. I guess they called just the RX100. And uh, when you look at this camera, it's about the same size as what the Mark III is. It was it's a really compact camera. It kind of looks like you know a Canon point and shoot, one of those power shot cameras mm -hmm. that people spend a hundred. Fifty dollars on um, that kind of sell really well in the holidays. See them on sale. The one that Ashton Kutcher will pimp, you know, when he was doing stuff for Nikon. It's the kind of camera that you got for your mom when she said, "Oh, I need to get a new camera." Exactly. It's something that's simple, easy to yeah. use. Uh, does your timestamp can can do your intelligent auto. Uh, this is not in that class at all. Uh, this is a while well, in size, it's about the same size and a little bigger than those. Uh, this is really a beefier camera because it has a big sensor inside. It has what's called a, a one inch sensor size. Now, that doesn't mean that if you measure diagonally in terms of rectangles, it's a one inches diagonally. That's just old parlance with old camera technology. Um, but it, it's effectively like several times bigger in surface area than the sensor you'd find in a smartphone 
or in a, one well, of those PowerShot cameras. I mean, a smartphone sensor is going to be a, like a little chip of silicon that's like tiny. Tiny, yeah, you can Super barely tiny. see it. But, but I mean, how does it compare to, say, like an APS-C sensor in a mirrorless camera or something like right. that? Right. So in the higher end cameras, we've heard phrases like APS-C, which is what the Canon Rebels are, and mm -hmm. the entry-level Nikons, and something like Micro Four Thirds. APS-C is a little smaller than the 35 millimeter full frame, and Micro Four Thirds is a little smaller than that, and this is about half the area of a Micro Four Thirds. So, okay, so this is smaller sensor than micro, anything we've tested, really. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it kind of makes sense given the size of the camera. Yes, exactly. I mean, and, and there are full frame massive sensors in small cameras like the RX1, but those are $2,000 cameras right. also. Uh, but much better than what you get in um, than a smartphone. So two years ago, a one inch camera size in a small form factor, great, but What's the lens like? So the first generation and the second generation of the RX cameras had a Zeiss lens and had a zoom lens. So I'm going to actually press this button and zoom out. But uh, if you look at lens specs, uh, the equivalent of a 35 millimeter lens of the old ones was 28 to 100. So okay. it's, it's a good, you know, it gets wide enough to about 35, a little wider than 35 millimeter, and goes to 100, which is a, a good over 2x zoom. So that accounts for the crop on the. Yes, that's that's the, the, this is I'm talking size. about the the equivalent of 35 millimeter, okay. but um, on but the aperture, so that's how wide the the uh, it opens up to, mm -hmm. was not that great. It was 1/8 which is considered wide at its widest, but once you zoomed in just a little bit, so this is zooming in, once you zoomed in just a little bit on the old cameras, it would drop down to something closer to its 4.9. So, so what that means that it's less light, you, you're getting less light in on the sensor the more you zoom in, even yeah. if you zoom in just a tiny bit. Even if you zoomed in from the 28 millimeters in the old one to like a 35 millimeter or 40 millimeter, mm -hmm. and, and 40 millimeter is a pretty good portrait um, focal distance, uh, 40 to 50, you're dropping down to 3.5 to 4, f4, um, which on a small sensor means you mm -hmm. get less of the depth of field effect, um, you have to bump, bump up your ISO, um, and you have to reduce your, sh you have to increase, uh, reduce your shutter speed. You can't. So, so you have more chance of getting blurry shots that mm -hmm. are, or slightly out or of, noisier yeah. shots, um, and you don't get a nice that nice buttery depth of field effect. So, uh, and with the, with the second version of the uh, the RX100, uh, the Mark II, they also added a, a, a tiltable lens mm -hmm. or a tiltable um, viewfinder in the back, yeah. um, and an accessory shoe on the top, and some Wi-Fi. So. Um, all that stuff makes it over to the, the third model. So there are several things that are new about this third, uh, the Mark III. And I gotta say up front that it is more expensive than the Mark II. So uh, the price increments went up from about $600 to 650. 650 is still the current price of the RX100, the Mark II. Which they're still selling. Which they're still selling. Okay. And they added the Mark III and added $150 to the price. So this is an $800 pocket camera. That's and if you went to a Best Buy and you're looking at camera, small cameras and you saw 150 bucks, 200 bucks, 800 bucks is a big jump. So you're wondering, what are you getting here with $800? I mean, that, that is a, you can buy an SLR for the, or you could buy a really nice mirrorless camera with a lens for oh, yeah. that same Absolutely. amount of money. Yes, but what you're getting, of course, is the compact size. Okay. So here's here's what's new in this camera. The first new thing is that it actually has a built-in electronic viewfinder. Um, a lot of people like shooting with the EVF. If you're shooting with, for example, uh, DSLR, you will notice on the back of the DSLR, there's an optical viewfinder, because that's where the light comes in through the front. There's a, a mirror, a uh, pentaprism mirror that bounces, and you can see exactly what the lens is seeing through this optical viewfinder. Uh, with mirrorless cameras and digital sensors that, that, that just go straight to um, this uh, LCD screen. There's, the no, back, there's no room there's for mirrors. No room One of the for things, mirrors yeah. or anything. Um, but there are accessories that you can attach on or have built in an electronic viewfinder. And this one has one built in. So uh, it's actually recessed here. It's really nicely designed where there's a switch here. It says finder. And I'm going to pop that up. So it pops up. And then you actually have to pull this out. And as you see the screen turned off, there's actually a proximity sensor, uh, which I found was really accurate. And pop that out. And now. Um, if I cover it because of the proximity sensor, which I believe is right below it, you can actually uh, you can actually see it from here. But it has it's a uh, 800 by 600 uh, resolution display, which so, is higher than what you actually get in the three-inch viewfinder in the back. So it's pretty good resolution, crazy high pixel density for such a small display. Yeah, really right? high pixel density for what, such a small display, and you get all the UI elements you'd get on the back as well. You get all your uh, all your information, so all this information that you get in the back. 
pops in here. And what it's really useful for is if you're shooting really bright daylight mm -hmm. um, and, you, and there's a lot of glare on the LCD and the LCD isn't bad, but now you can look in here and actually um, find your focus. The latency is pretty good. I'd still say not as good as the optical, uh, the light exactly coming in through you the mean, lens. You mean you're, you're, there's a little bit of lag between what's happening in the real world and what you're seeing? Very, very lag and the frame rate isn't, isn't as such that you don't know you're looking at a screen. Okay. Um, but useful. The can, one thing, can you use it? I mean, so primarily it seems like the kind of thing you use in a really bright day outside, though. Yeah. Not something you're going to use if you're inside where there's controlled lighting. Right. Or, or if you don't want the brightness of the LCD to kind of blind everyone and to show okay. everyone that you, you know, you, you're taking, taking a picture. Yeah. Um, you would also use this EVF and also okay. use a slightly less battery uh, than um, than the, the back LCD because of the backlight. Is it an LCD or an OLED or what? I believe it, it's it is an uh, I believe it's an OLED. Okay. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that. It, and is the color reproduction, like, do you see dithering or anything like that no, in the color low light is, situations? it's really good. Okay. Um, the one thing I will say is that when I put my face up to here, um, and you can see, uh, sometimes I push it in a little bit. Oh, and then it turns um, off? It doesn't turn off, it just defocuses. Ah. Um, and so you actually have to make sure this is a little bit easy to push in. Um, but so, it's a nice little add-on. I still primarily take pictures with the LCD in the back, mm -hmm. uh, but it's nice that that, which normally would be an expensive accessory, is built in. in. Do, does this have manual control over focus and aperture and stuff like that? Is that easily access accessible? Absolutely. So in the, all of the RX100 lines is a full manual camera. Mm -hmm. uh, it's made so that on the top you have a dial, you go from your aperture, uh, your aperture priority, shutter priority, or full manual. It has a bozo mode. And it definitely does have a bozo mode. Okay. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm actually gonna plug in the camera to our HDMI and show you what the camera sees. Because uh, that lets you see a few of the menus. And also demonstrates that it has HDMI out. out. Output. What, what's the use case for HDMI output? Is it just to put on, put show pictures on your show TV? Show pictures, probably? or some people use it as a monitor. Oh, okay. Um, but it's, you should see exactly what the camera is seeing right now. Oh. Now you do lose uh, what is the the. Uh, I'm actually point it over at you. You do lose the the crosshatch uh, the the uh, the framing uh, some of the UI, but you can see on the bottom that um, it is you know I'm shooting at 130. Um, mm -hmm. and f1.8, and I'm shooting aperture priority. Now if I switch it over, um, you can see that I have my different priority modes. You remember mm -hmm. uh, your movie modes, your panorama modes, your intelligent auto, and this is your your That's, your bozo mode. Yeah, um, I did do some testing of that. And What's I shoot superior mostly, auto? That sounds much better oh, than gosh, intelligent auto. Yeah. It, um, and I shoot most in priority mode. Now, unlike uh, a, my DSLR, it actually there's a slight delay between changing modes. So if I'm change, okay. switching between aperture and shutter priority, like I'm in aperture right now and I go to shutter, it's like a little bit of a delay. It bumps that menu, which I don't like particularly. Are, um, how's the f shutter lag though? I mean, that's the that's the lag that I traditionally uh, associate with this kind of camera. Is the the time that it, there's usually a measurable amount of time between when you push the shutter button down and when it's the picture very low, takes? Almost negligible. Okay. Um, and you can see that right now uh, in this widest, so I'm at the wide 24 millimeter. As you see, it popped up on the top. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's at 1.8. So the other thing that's new is this lens here, and that's, I think, the biggest change in this camera, is that the lens is now an f1.8 to f2.8 lens, oh. which, which means, and they did change the focal distance, it's a 24 to 70 as opposed to 28 to 100. Uh, 24 to 70 I was very comfortable with, because that's the same as my the one I have on my Canon camera. Well, but it, with a different crop, obviously. Or is well, this, this, this is the, the equivalent? equivalent. Okay. Is, yeah, 24 to 70 equivalent. Um, it's a very usable lens. Very usable lens at its widest. If you just switch back to what the camera sees, uh, at, at its widest, uh, this is considered what I would consider, you know, fairly wide angle. Yep. And, and if so you, you take a picture of me, office. then it's like it's wider than you'd probably use for a portrait. Yeah, there there's all go. sorts of weird stuff on the side, right? Um, there you go. A, a flattering image. That is right there. True magic. Um, and then when I zoom in, it goes all the way to 70. So let's say I want to go. Uh, let's see what posters we have over there. So you're not going to do a massive zoom, but if you want to get a picture of your kid playing soccer, right. then you can do a little. You can get a little closer, assuming you're standing on the side And lines. what you notice is that on the bottom, you see this is f1.8. I'm actually going to set this down so it doesn't shake as much. Uh, you, you see this is f1.8, f right there. As I zoom in, f2, right. which is not so bad. And if I go to like, for example, 35 millimeter, f2.8 is actually 
what it closes down to. Okay. And you go all the way down to 70 millimeters and it'll stay at f2. f2.8 is not bad, especially yeah. with the low light sensitivity oh, on yeah. these cameras. Yeah, with f2.8, and I'm, I'm zoomed in all the way at 70 millimeter and I have Keanu here. He's so sad. You can see in the back, it's pretty nice. The, the blurring in the back. Does this mean you don't have independent aperture control though? Is it always tied to the zoom or can you open and you close can, it? Actually, you can, if I want to close it, I'm actually, what I'm doing in, in the back of the camera is dial. Oh, okay. There you go. So there's a physical control down. for that. Yeah, F5.6 and you can close all the way if you were, for your landscape shots. Okay. But I'm keeping it to F2.8 right now because I want that buttery bokeh and taking this photo right there. That's a nice looking photo. That's, that's alright. Um, um, so so that means anywhere in the 35 millimeter range, anywhere you're going to be shooting portraits for the most part, or like shoulder and head shots is going to be f2.8, which is totally, totally usable. Yeah. Um, and then also because that one-inch sensor with the Mark II and the Mark III, it's backside illuminated, which means the way they arrange the cells in the sensor, as such the light comes in, um, and it's supposed to be better in low light. So I have some sample images um, I'd like to throw up. Uh, these, this, these of course are raw photos I've mm -hmm. taken. I've been poured in Lightroom. So this first one here, uh, very classic just macro picture. I love just when I get I'm the camera. Back. That's, 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 it's, a, it's, it's Luigi. Luigi. You celebrate the year of Luigi. Um, natural oh. light. Uh, what this picture illustrates is uh, the macro abilities of this camera. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I like, I want to always test with a camera with any lens is the, what are called, it's called the minimum focusing distance. Uh, how close can you physically get to the subject of your camera uh, before you lose uh, focus? And with this camera, if, at the widest aperture, mm -hmm. and, or the widest focal length actually, uh, 24 millimeter, you can get about two inches from Luigi's nose right there. That's pretty and good. And still have him in focus, which I liked. Um, and then uh, if you zoom, if you use the zoom, and of course that changes the perspective and in the background, um, it's about a foot away at 70 millimeters. Uh, moving on, I did some low light testing. And also, uh, of course, if you, we move to the next picture, it's classic. Oh, puppy. hey. You gotta, you gotta take a puppy picture. Dog's nose. Gotta take a puppy, great, great dog pictures. Um, get, and, and at a high enough shutter speed, um, it, with, the, with the auto, uh, intelligent auto, actually. Um, got it, moving dog. So this is Chris. in the Bozo camera mode. Bozo camera mode. Dog looks good. I mean, when you can see the dog's eyebrows and the nose, and you have mm -hmm. that kind of detail, um, can you are, you are you gonna put these photos up on the site someplace they, where people can see them the in right full, now, actually. full resolution? Yep. Okay. Um, and then, that's, uh, moving on, I did some low light testing. So indoor, uh, this is in aperture priority, so I want to maximize the aperture. I want to make sure that I get as much light into the camera as possible. Uh, this is a fairly dark indoors, bar, right? A dark bar. Looks fantastic. Now, if you do zoom in on this, and of course we can't zoom in on the YouTube video um, as, as much as looking at the actual picture, uh, there is, it's noisy. And this, I believe, was at relatively high ISO, above 1600 ISO, mm -hmm. but it's very usable. If you look around, there's a little bit of grain in places that you can Yeah, in the faces where you're gonna notice the grain in the highlights, um, but it, the dynamic range of this camera is fantastic. You can see that underneath the bar, like above the bar area where mm -hmm. all the colors are in the glasses, it's very bright, especially in that corner by mm -hmm. that, uh, the entrance way. Um, but you can make out the details of those glasses, and then below the bar where normally it would be very shadowy between the shoulders of those two dudes, mm -hmm. um, you can make out details there as well. So I, I really appreciate the dynamic range of this camera. Let's move on a couple more low light photos. Outdoor, very low light. This is almost pitch black at night, and that's why you can see the lighting in the back with the sign that, and doors blown out. That is a out. gorgeous picture, Norm. Um, but dark skies, you can make them look gray, and this is a relatively high ISO, um, at, least, at least 3200 is, ISO. Is this a manual or an automatic as well? And this, this is with aperture priority. So okay. I said, I'm gonna hold the camera still, I'm gonna open the aperture as wide as possible, I'm gonna turn my ISO to auto, so it'll pop up the ISO. You can bracket your ISOs. Um, Does it have an accelerometer so that it, it won't, so, you know, so that you can, it helps you figure, find the steady part to take the picture? It doesn't so have an accelerometer to, to okay. do that, uh, but, it, it doesn't do any kind of hand, no, hand yeah, okay. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's all on you. Yes. Cool. Um, and, and then here, uh, this was very, very dark and it really shows off the dynamic range in this photo uh, where metal, metal objects are really mm -hmm. typically very difficult to photograph um, uh, because of the shininess. You can see on that chin on that armor, it's kind of bright. Um, but 
I thought turned out very well, and this is also relatively high ISO. And this is aperture priority as well? Yes. You, you, you usually shoot aperture yeah. priority, right? I want, I, want, I want to open it up as wide as I can and get as most, most light as I need, and then measure, uh, stop it down to get more, uh, to adjust the depth, uh, depth of field. So, so are you using autofocus on this shot, or are you using manual focus, do you remember? Uh, I believe this one's autofocus, and I usually use center focus. This does have manual focus. If we switch back to what the camera sees, actually, um, and we'll go back to Keanu. Uh, so autofocus right now, I have the center, so that's why you see this this box right here. So it's the normal press halfway down, and yeah. it focuses on whatever's in the middle of the frame. But, and here you can change your focus modes. Uh, you do have your standard wide focus, your flexible spot, which means you move. Uh, the wide has, I believe, 20, 20 or 24 points right here, and then it'll pick even up close to the, the edge. Oh, no, that's out of its focus. Yeah, it's thinking the light is... It's confused by the light. Yeah, that's why I don't like using the, the wide focus, mm -hmm. and that's why I, when I shoot, and this is a, a little bit of a, uh, just a preference, I use center focus, and so, for example, if I wanna have Keanu off frame here, I center focus his head, mm -hmm. and then reframe here. And what kind of picture. focus does this camera use? Uh, this, I believe, uses uh, phase tech focus. Okay. It's built in. Um, I'm not 100% on that, but I believe that's from the same one as the, the last camera. Um, and uh, what I also wanted to show also was though, it does have a DMF mode, which all Sony cameras do. So uh, you can do autofocus, pure autofocus, or the autofocus and then change. So for example, if I wanted to take a photo and like I focus to here, and then I can still then shift my you focus can kind manually. Of dial it in. You're using the yeah. knob, the ring yeah. on the, the on ring the, on that, yeah. on the front. Um, change my focus. I, I actually really like the DMF mode on Sony cameras. It's it, it's it lets you make small adjustments when the autofocus is dumb. Because sometimes, no matter how good you are with autofocus, yeah. it makes dumb choices. And the peaking didn't show the edge enhancement peaking didn't show uh, in the live view, but that is also adjustable and on on both oh, okay. the uh, the EVF and the back LCD. So that just shows also. you the area that the camera yeah. thinks is in focus at any now, given time. As much as I like the the new lens, I think the new lens is fantastic. It's not perfect, um, and there's a series of two images I want to show up here. Um, when you get up close and you open up to 1.8. Mm -hmm. um, you can see that in the center, where and there's a phone, of, a photo of just like an iPhone five, um, where it says Vimeo, that text looks relatively sharp. But anything around it, and even that, if, if you zoom in, that text is actually pretty fuzzy. It almost looks like there's something on the lens. Yeah, it looks almost a little, a little smudgy. And this isn't. I'm not talking about around all around the edge mm -hmm. of it, because that's just because it's at 1.8. But that the point where it's supposed to be on focus, where it says hyperlapse and Vimeo, that actually is a little bit fuzzy. Yeah. Um, but if you stop it down, that's at 1.8. If you stop it down to 3.5, um, then everything is sharp. And you do have a natural gradient from focus to out of focus, so your bokeh is still there. Mm -hmm. But you can tell it's much more in focus in that text. Um, so when I'm shooting, I actually shoot, if I'm trying to get any type of detail, uh, I shoot at 2.8, uh, which I find is a really good sweet spot for this, this uh, camera and this lens system. Okay. Um, what also, another feature this camera has built in that's new is an ND filter, so a neutral density filter. Norm, uh, what's an ND filter? So uh, it's, it's a filter that goes on top of the lens that can just reduce the brightness. Like if you're, on the out, if you're outside shooting a really bright day and you say you want to shoot at F3.5, which is fairly wide, um, and this ISO, like you want to you know, use 100 ISO, which you would use uh, f to uh, let the, the uh, to not it's gain It's the least all. grain yes. for the most, when you have and, the most yes, light. Best image quality, and it, right. you, and it doesn't, and you're not, you're not trying to get any more light because you have the most light, but the maximum shutter speed on this camera is one two thousandth of a second. Well, that's kind of slow, actually. That is actually, I mean, compared to a DSLR, we can do one four thousandths or one six thousandths. Uh, it's, it's a little slow, so you flip on the MD filter, and um, it, it's, it's it just helps compensate for that. Is, is that a sensor setting, or is that an actual piece of thing that comes down in front of the it's light? It's actual path piece the of thing, and you can st you swoop it on in the menu. Okay, so it um, turns on and off. Okay, yeah. um, and then the other thing I want to test was the continuous shutter because we did talk about shutter speed. So mm -hmm. I was able to take this out to the racetracks, and the new processor, the Bion X or whatever you call the Sony calls it. Um, says it'll take 10 FPS, which is really fast, but that's really only for JPEGs. That's for photos, right? And that's for photos. Yeah, so not 10 for, because it'll shoot video, too. It'll shoot really yeah. high bit rate, 24 FPS video, 30 FPS video. But for photos, you want to capture action, like, you know, this horse reaching the finish line in a, a sequence, you want to, you know, just hold down the shutter button, and let, I'm getting photos, like so one, So you're getting two, like a quarter three. of a stride, it looks like. Yeah. And at 10 FPS, 
you would get much more action than this. This is not 10 FPS. And one of the reasons is that when you shoot raw, that actually drops down significantly. And if you're not shooting continuous shutter priority mode, uh, where the focus is locked, that also drops down. So if you want to have a, go if there's like a dog that's moving, uh, or any animal that's moving and or a changing, small child, or a small or, child, yeah. but moving at different distances, and you want to, you're changing your exposure and focus between mm -hmm. that those shots. You're only going to get like three or four FPS. And if you want to lock focus and you shoot raw, it's only about six FPS. Okay, so 10 FPS is JPEG, JPEG bit most basic settings. Most basic locking that focus, which I guess for this horse track, because I know exactly how far the horses are away, mm -hmm. I could have used that, uh, but I want also the raw images as well to, to get more detail right. crop in after the fact. Um, also, when you're shooting 10 FPS or in any continuous shutter mode or even raw, mm -hmm. uh, it takes a while to, to save up that buffer. I mean, that 10 FPS is to store in the buffer and then it writes to the memory card, and that's going to take a while depending on how fast your memory card is. This is, I assume, a micro, uh, regular SD card? Regular SD memory card okay. pops in the bottom, uh, which is a good time to bring up that uh, the other thing this camera is... Um, that's a little quirk of this camera is the battery life. Now, the battery, you can pop it out, and I'm gonna show you that in the bottom. Is it a standard Sony battery that you can get it's places, or is one it special? Of their, it's one of the Sony batteries they have standard. It's not the same one as their, uh, their mirrorless line. Well, I mean, yeah, that it's, makes it's, sense. Yeah, so it's this size. Uh, it doesn't come with external charger. Uh, so Sony does sell one. Uh, so you can only charge this with micro USB. Which so you have to have the camera there. plugged into the wall. Yeah, to charge to charge the camera. And I was a little disappointed because the way I take pictures, I take you know a bunch of pictures, I review them, I send them over to Wi-Fi. Um, I was only able to get about 250 photos with this, and Sony says 320. Uh, 250, I think, is that's good enough for one light day. It's a it's a good day. It's for, a mo good, for normal people. For normal people. I, I never take more than 250 photos in a day. If you're going to a Comic-Con and you have the intent of taking photos, right. and you want to take a lot of photos and then you know, delete them, uh, even 300 photos isn't going to be enough. To give a point of reference, what does your 6D do? That does at least 400 photos. Okay. Um, and then like a mirrorless, like my yeah. 5R or something like that it's, is probably around, three, around 300, 400, 300, yeah, it seems 300, like. 300, 400. Yeah. I just thought that in the 200 range, I was seeing it hit you know, half battery life before half day was over. I, mean, and I, was, I was using this as packs, and it was, I was a little disappointed. Like I did ha run into a day where I ran out of power. Did, did you turn off Wi-Fi and all that stuff, or no? Well, at the end, I did turn off Wi-Fi and start using the uh, the EVF, mm -hmm. but I mean, you shouldn't have to charge the battery that. for a day. Um, and it not having, you know, not have coming with external uh, external charger meant that in order to charge, buy extra batteries, I should buy an extra battery and the external charger. Do they sell so. a pack with a battery and a charger in it? I don't it? know if they sell a pack, but I'm sure Amazon has, has bundled it. How, how much is the battery? And how I don't much know, is the I'm charger? Exactly you don't sure. know. Okay. Yeah. Um, that, that's a little weird, but I mean, it, it doesn't seem that unusual for that class yeah, of camera. Yeah. And because it's micro USB, you can actually carry use like your cell phone supplementary yes, battery or something can, like that, do that for as well. you need to do. Um, so the one thing I did take this to, one event, one of the events I took this to is PAX, went to Seattle, and it afforded an interesting opportunity where uh, about a year ago, I brought this camera also to Seattle mm -hmm. and took it to the um, the EMP Museum. The Experience Music Project. Experience Music Project, a really awesome museum in Seattle. And I took some photos uh, with actually a 50 millimeter lens at the time. And this is a photo actually taken with, um, I believe, the Canon camera. Well, let's see. Let's see if you can tell the difference. Will so I took us? I took the exact same photos last year and this Did year. Did you look before you went? That's no. A, and okay. and I I went and I kind of remembered in my head how I framed these photos, and I intentionally didn't bring this the Canon camera to the EMP and only shot with the Sony. So I think two. this is the Sony. Do you think the second one is the Sony? I think that one's the Sony the because second the one, angle is less wide. But I'm looking at it based on lens, not. Like, I'm not looking at image quality because I don't think I could tell on the TV from 15 feet away. The second one is a Sony, and okay. uh, they're both shot pretty wide. The, the first one's definitely shot a little, uh, a little bit wider, but this, you can see it's with the full frame, this difference between the full frame uh, depth of field. Is that from frame. the movie? Or this from, is, what is it, from this Alien from Resurrection aliens, or something? Aliens, the second Alien. Second Aliens, okay. Um, and let's move on to these other series of comparisons. Um, for okay. example, this, this is uh, from Constantine, I, I believe. And then this one. That's the Sony. That's the Sony. Yeah. So even um, your depth of field is a lot better on the on the first. You get way more depth than that. Now you can overuse that, of course. But uh, even just the, the softness of how it fades out in the back. Um, now I, I like the Sony image a lot, um, but I did come back wishing that I'd brought 
the, the 60 The real camera, camera. okay. Yeah, the 60 camera. And I, I think I have one more final comparison up close, a, uh, a static portrait. And this one's from the Canon I took last year, and then from the Sony. Now, the Sony one I still think is great. Uh, and you can definitely, definitely tweak it a little bit, but it, it just what you're getting when you pay, you know, a thousand dollars more yeah. for a fifteen hundred dollar camera with a nice lens. Right. Uh, what you get is just that's not something that you can replace easily. Well, and because you either because you have the optical viewfinder because you have easier control over your stuff, you're also not seeing things like the reflection off the glass in with the Canon shots. But we are with the Sony shots. Now, I mean, that seems like something you could probably fix if you worked at it. But maybe you couldn't see that there was a reflection there on the viewfinder on the Sony, but you yeah. could with the well, optical so that's viewfinder definitely with the, the peaking. Yeah. That, that obscures a lot of that stuff. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm going to you know, I didn't buy this camera as a, as a way to replace the 60. I'm still going right. to use this. I'm finding that I'm carrying this with me way more often. It actually goes in my laptop sleeve. Mm -hmm. um, so it's with me when I go to meetings. I have a laptop um, and, and this. Um, and weight-wise, there's just no comparison. Like I mean, this, that's what, three pounds probably? Uh, it's a little over three pounds, especially yeah. with the lens. I think it's about five pounds. Uh, having used this for several weeks now, this, which I, I, it's lighter than the 5D Mark III, it's, feels it's, heavy. I mean, this is a small DSLR, but like I said. Full frame DSLR. It's, sorry, full frame DSLR. This is something I would put in my pocket. Like, yeah. I mean, this would easily go in a, in a hoodie pocket. You can carry it around with you everywhere you go. If you're just walking around without carrying a man purse, this is the camera you take, mm -hmm. not this guy. Yep, and I definitely had to use the, the camera strap with it. Oh, too. you use the yeah, little. I definitely little, use okay. the camera strap. So, uh, I uh, really does like this, this have camera. a flash? It does have a flash. I'm gonna, I'll show that real quick. Pop that up, and okay. you, can, you can tilt that up if you want to bounce off the Ooh. ceiling. Is it bright enough to bounce off the ceiling? Yeah, definitely bright enough to bounce and off And I assume the that is going to have an impact on your battery life yes. in a negative way. Oh, absolutely. And then that. Did, did you find yourself needing to use it? It looked like you took a bunch yeah. of dark shots, and I know you don't like flashes I don't generally. Like flash. That's the, um, it does get rid of the, uh, the multi-shoe, um, multi uh, multi-interface shoe. Okay, that, um, but you don't need it if you have a flash and a viewfinder on, yes. right? Yes, uh, yeah, that's only if yeah, if you want other accessories, other, like the external flash. Um, what about, have you shot any video with it? Uh, I did shoot some video. Um, video is good low light stuff. It has um, the continuous autofocus. It, it's okay. Uh, it's higher bit rate in this one than the last one because of the processor. Does it have face detection and that stuff to kind of know where it should focus? Face, okay. face detection stuff. So um, you can definitely shoot video. There's no audio in. So, you know, if you're going to shoot and, and clap, clap, clap. you got to sync that up. And it does yeah. have, like all the other ones, a mounting port. So, you know, you could technically take this to an event and and, and shoot this and use this as a quasi professional 30 camera. minute limit i assume 30 minute limit okay for video as always um, i mean that's that's reasonable for yeah. for uh, essentially a value add so the biggest upgrades uh an evf mm -hmm. uh the new lens and uh nd filter um i think the new lens and the evf itself warrant the 150 dollar um price increase T typically Faster lenses are much more expensive than slower yes, lenses. Yes. Like that is that is the one universal. And the fact that they can get that onto a small camera, mm -hmm. um, it, it's more challenging than to build a bigger lens, a giant lens that has those same attributes. Right. Um, I think it's a wonderful compact camera. I think eight hundred dollars is a lot for it. Uh, as your first camera, I would not recommend getting this as your first and only camera. Uh, you can get a six hundred dollar, um, you know, mirrorless camera that you can buy new lenses for. Um, that's going to do much more than this. Uh, this is definitely a companion camera, or if you just, if, or you know, I would recommend this as a secondary camera if you have the budget to it, spend on it. It seems like this is, like if you need this camera, you probably know you need this camera. This is, should not be a camera you go out and you're like, well, what, what, how does this compare to the $150 Canon? Exactly. Um, right. So that's it. It's a Sony RX100 Mark III. RX100 Mark III. It's 800 bucks, 850 bucks. That's a lot um, of cash. Yes, and you know, if you want to try it out, I'd, you can borrow lenses, has it, everyone can always rent it. Uh, I think the Mark II is still a good camera. Mm -hmm. uh, the lens, I think, is just much better than this one. On the Mark II, your big complaint was really the lens, it seemed The like, lens right? and autofocus speed, and that doesn't, the autofocus speed hasn't changed much on this one, mm -hmm. but really the fact that you, this opens up to 2.8 when it's at 70 millimeters is a big, is a big Faster difference. at zoom. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks, Norm. Uh, we'll be back with more tested soon. See you guys later. Bye.